The following presentation is about Bur Oak health issues, primarily found in North Dakota during the 2022 growing season, but they are issues that are persistent throughout the state and throughout our natural Bur Oak stands. I always like to start a presentation about tree health issues by talking about stress and what causes stress. And this is important because it's necessary to understand that trees are generally vulnerable to health issues when growing conditions are challenging. There are abiotic and biotic mechanisms influencing the vigor and vitality of a tree, but it is most often the abiotic that makes it possible for the biotic to become present. Now the abiotic conditions like weather and soils um, cause health issues to arise and make room for insects and disease to become established. So it's important to understand that North Dakota is a prairie landscape and generally that means it doesn't have adequate moisture or temperature or humidity regimes that promote healthy tree growth. Now when you combine this with the general soil conditions and a lack of topography, you have challenging growing conditions to start with. Now the most important issue that can be addressed is the addition of water. We can always water trees to improve their growing conditions in the North Dakota landscape. So now that we have some general understanding about the influence of abiotic and biotic issues, um, let's talk about oak issues that arose during 2022. Now starting in July, Forest Health was getting contacted about browning leaves and dieback in the upper crowns of bur oak. Now, now these were primarily natural bur oak stands. With some investigation and reference to the previous season's growing conditions, we could see that based on the decline recovery seesaw concept, oak had declined in health due to the 2021 drought conditions. Now this was then combined with the 2022 spring cool moist conditions. Now two general rules are that drought conditions promote bark and wood boring insects, while Cool, moist conditions encourage the spread of disease, since most diseases are fungal. So I'd like to start by noting that in the spring, it's not uncommon, regardless of the weather conditions, to experience a defoliating insect on oak and many other deciduous trees. Defoliation is generally short-lived, and the tree will use stored resources to produce another flush of foliage. Now this is not to be confused with the defoliation and mortality of upper limbs that may be expanding or becoming visible late in the summer. Now late summer loss of foliage can be the result of beetles boring into the conductive tissues under the bark and disrupting the flow of water and nutrients from the root system to the leaf area. So dead branches and browning foliage of individual branches became visible injuries that were pronounced late in the summer of 2022. And this is following the 2021 drought. Now during 2021, some stressed oaks and natural stands became infested with two-line chestnut borer. And that's because of the susceptibility following the water stress. Now the larvae of these beetles mature under the bark from July into the fall which causes the leaves in the area of the feeding to turn brown and die, and this is then killing the upper limbs. So the leafless upper branches died during the late summer of 2021, and the newly browning leaves appearing in late summer of 2022 occurred after the larvae entered the tree a month earlier. Now, two-line chestnut borer is also known to have a two-year life cycle in our climate zone. So damage occurs slowly and can go unnoticed for a couple seasons. So two-line chestnut borer created some of the most obvious damage to bur oak following the drought, but there was an assortment of other insects present on most oak trees. Now it's rare to find only one parasitic insect present on a stressed tree at any one time. There are often a few species of sap feeding insects that can be found on most deciduous trees in North Dakota during the growing season. 
Now, all of these species cause some type of damage to leaves, like shriveling or necrosis, some type of stippling, or simply various other types of damage and discoloration. So insects were not the only health issues that trees were dealing with in 2022. Stress-induced drought from the previous season and an inability to recover from these conditions created a susceptibility to all damaging agents. So the spring 2022 moisture conditions were able to encourage the spread of disease as well. Now one such disease that brought visible conditions and many questions was the browning of clumps of foliage on branch ends that were scattered throughout oak crowns. Now this is Botryosphyria species, which is a fungi that causes this browning clump to form late in the summer. And it's important to understand that this, this fungi is generally not detrimental to the tree. Now with some of the Botryosphyria questions, came additional questions or concerns about the loss of bark on the trunk. So there are several fungi that are saprophytic and will colonize the corky outer bark and cause it to slough off the tree. Now this really only creates a, a weakened spot in the inner bark that's just vulnerable to outside injury that no longer has that corky buffer. But this also is not a detrimental disease for trees. One of the most important finds for bur oak in 2022 was the presence of bur oak blight, Tubachia ioensis, also called Bob. This disease uh, has not been reported in North Dakota until the 2022 growing season. Now, it is rarely a deadly disease for an oak, but can cause significant leaf browning during the growing season. In order to become detrimental to the tree, Bob needs to be present on the tree for several consecutive seasons. So the best approach to protecting oak from Bob is to assure adequate watering and of course minimal disturbance or damage to the growing site. Bob can be identified by the necrosis or the browning of the leaf veins and the intervenal tissues later in the growing season. The browning starts from the most distal end of the leaf and works towards the petiole. Another indicator of bob are the pustules that form near the base of the petiole, which prevents the leaf from detaching once it senesces. Now this means that these leaves that remain on the tree are dead throughout most of the winter and stay there and can be an identifying symptom. In order to combat all of these issues, the best management steps to take are to improve the growing conditions for the tree. The most pronounced resource needed in the North Dakota landscape is water, as was mentioned earlier. Making sure your trees have adequate water is the best thing to do. Sometimes this can only be accomplished by removing some of the competing trees in a given area, which thereby increases the availability of water, light, and nutrients to the trees that are remaining. Encouraging the use of pesticides often has negative repercussions on other naturally beneficial processes that are occurring on and around a tree. Now with this list of oak damaging agents, the only pesticide applications that may be worth considering is the use of a systemic insecticide to stop two-line chestnut borer from eventually killing very high value landscaped oak trees. And so this is not an inexpensive process, so it really should be focused only on an oak tree that might be in your front yard. And it certainly will not work in a natural forest circumstance. So this really completes my review of bur oak health issues. When you find yourself with questions about tree health, you can request assistance using the Sick Tree Assistance form. So the form can be found using the QR code, which is here on the slide, or going to www.ndinvasives.org and go to the star form, the Sick Tree Assistance request form, 
in the link on the page and enter your tree question, the location, and attach some photos. And it can all be done within the online form. Thanks for your time.